right, this is the poly tunnel at uh, Calcutt and Boots. You can see there's all sorts of uh, interesting things lying around. See, they've got lights all the way around. Like a little workbench. And up here they've got the uh, power. There's the master switch. There's like an end going out. There's the bins. Let's see how wet the floor gets. Look. But you see this is a 58 foot boat and you can see how much is hanging out the back so just go here Wow, what a week that was. Um, yeah, made loads of mistakes uh, and picked up lots of hints and tips from different people. So I just thought I'd uh, go through them all. They might be of use to somebody, who knows? Um, the first one that I found very quickly early on was uh, paint all the fiddly bits and time consuming bits first. Don't do it in with the main job. Um, the problem with that is uh, really as number two states, because you're painting in patches the the adjoining paint still has to be pretty wet so if you're tied up doing other bits and pieces then it will start to dry out and it will look a bit patchwork like so uh, that's one which I learned very quickly um, the first part of the stern was uh, looked quite bad so I, I did have to rub that down a little bit and uh, and sort of keep that in mind uh, and tied into that also obviously because you want to do the whole boat in one go, the whole roof in one go, you don't want to have to stop. So whatever you think you're going to have to stop for, the loo, drink, something to eat, anything, do it all before you actually start. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is have to stop uh, and come back to uh, some paint that's drying. That could cause no end of problems. Um, I didn't use any special brushes at all. They were just cheap ones. Uh, the layoff brush was just the biggest of the bunch. Um, I had bought a special layoff brush but couldn't really see what the uh, the difference was between that and uh, and the other ones and certainly it uh, it worked completely the same so I wouldn't bother uh, going for anything uh, costly. Uh, tip number five is the usual uh, put foil in the bottom of a tray just really to save you having to wash it out and if you're swapping paints it's uh, quite a useful trick um, yeah that works very well um, another one is to uh, keep a cl clean rag with you so when you're moving along especially after you've done a, a coat and you're on the second third so that you can wipe off any dust uh, and any insects that have landed on while uh, while you've been moving along the boat um, that works very well uh, as with everything in painting, preparation is the key, ensure all the rust is treated. Um, I use vac tan, it worked really well, uh, also is an undercoat and you don't have to wash it off uh, unlike with fur tan, so um, whatever you want to use there. Um, really important, uh, the painting chap on site sort of emphasised this, is check each day for the dew point. Um, there's a, 
a, a bit in the blog about that with the uh, tissue or you can look uh, online for temperatures and things like that um, don't be tempted to paint late afternoon that's purely from the bump that I got with the paint uh, apparently it can make it uh, a duller effect if you, uh, if you if it has to uh, dry into the evening um, yeah so that's uh, that's those Right, it's quite important to allow a, a full day for the paint to dry in between coats. Uh, it varies depending on the temperatures, but uh, if you can give it a full day, then uh, then you can be sure that uh, you're on the uh, on the right tracks. Uh, one thing I really didn't do on one is to mix the paint well. You need to mix it very well. Uh, I thought I did a proper job, but obviously not because it uh, it dried a, a fairly different colour. So I had to uh, sort of make sure I went over that on the third coat. Um, really useful thing is you know a month or two before keep any old tubs jars newspapers sticks anything like that that you're going to use uh, for stirring paint uh, bits and pieces that you can use and throw away uh, makes things so much easier if you can have all that to hand um, have a couple of bin liners for all your waste uh, and you can use the bin liners to uh, take off the old rollers when you've used them uh, if you put your hand completely in it and uh, grab it from the outside of the bag then you can actually take the roller off uh, people who have dogs will know how uh, how to do that and the uh, the most important bit is to uh, always have a good supply of beer but that goes without saying I'm not sure why I put that on the list anyway there you go and now to the costings uh, it's all listed on the screen here but basically uh, for three coats uh, on a 58 foot boat uh, you know, just over £200, which I didn't think was too bad. Uh, wet dock hire is really uh, useful if the weather's inclement uh, or you, you really don't know what it's going to be like. Uh, it's not too much extra, uh, but it looks like you can get the whole thing done if, uh, if you're careful for probably about four or £500, something like that, uh, which I thought was quite decent for, uh, for all the painting that was done. Of course, all the, uh, all the labour is your own labour, so it's uh, however... Uh, act if you feel like being or whatever so uh, no give it a go uh, what's the worst that can happen and good luck cheers <laughs>